Hello everybody, welcome back. So in this video I want to talk about the same equation as we did last time where we had the transport equation in two dimensions but this time the right side is not equal to zero it's equal to one so yeah so so if we write the left side as a dot product again, so a comma b dot the partial derivatives of u in the second vector we don't have zero on the on the right side, so we can't say um, we can't come to any conclusion about u um, in this case. So, but the, the, um, we can still make progress by drawing the, uh, the direction vector d in the xy plane. So, so a, b, a represents the run and b represents the rise. So it's going to look something like this. So this here is going to be the a, b vector and the vector per or a vector perpendicular to this is going to be the negative reciprocal. So um, if, if we say that this has slope uh, b over a, then this perpendicular vector will have a slope m perp equals negative a over b. So the uh, the rise is going to be negative a, and the run is going to be b. So this vector here is going to be b comma negative a. So it's um, the reason we write these vectors is because if we dot them into the position vector, we get ax plus by for the first one, and for the second vector we get we get bx minus ay. Now we can make a change of coordinates now in order to solve this PDE. So, so that means that we set, we, we introduce new variables. We set p equal, equals ax plus by and we set q equals bx minus Ay. So because we're introducing new variables, we're going to have to use the chain rule in order to write these derivatives here in terms of these new variables, p and q. So if we do that, we get partial of u, partial of x. This is going to be first derivative of u um, with respect to p times the derivative of p with respect to x and then plus partial of u with respect to with respect to the other variable q times derivative of q with respect to x so partial of p with with respect to x that's just going to be a so i have a then plus partial of u, partial of q, and then times derivative of q, of the derivative of q with respect to x, so that's just b. All right, so now I'm going to find partial of u, partial of y now. So it's going to be similar, but in this case we're going to have partial of p with respect to y plus so this year again is just the the chain rule it's when I introduce new variables I have to use the chain rule in order to find what the derivatives are in terms of these new variables so partial of p with respect to y that's just going to be b because x is treated as a constant so I have partial of u partial of p times b 
and then plus partial of u partial of q times let's see this is going to be negative a right so now that I have these formulas I can substitute them into the PDE in order to find the transform PDE so so if I plug in these expressions here I get a and now partial of e partial of x that's going to be a du dp and then plus b partial of u partial of q and then for the second term that's going to be plus b let's see partial of u partial of y that's going to be okay uh, b partial of u partial of p and then minus a all right and then this is equal to one all right, so now I'm going to simplify the left side. So if I distribute this, I get a squared partial v partial of p, and then so it, it, the, the second term becomes a b partial v partial of q, but in the second term here, I get minus a b partial v partial of q. So these terms here cancel out. So I'm just left with a squared partial v partial of p and then plus b squared partial of u partial of p equals 1. So now I can factor the left side and that gives me a squared plus b squared partial of u partial of p equals 1 and now I'm going to solve for this uh, this derivative here so so I can use the method of the first video I made to solve this one here for u partial integration so if I do that I get u pq equals p because 1 over a squared plus b squared is just a constant so it uh, it doesn't it's just a, a constant so it, the um, p is just the antiderivative so and now plus a constant, or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> because we have a PDE here, we have a uh, an arbitrary function f of the remaining variable q. So now that I know what u is, I can change back to the original variables. So, so the solution then, in terms of x and y, I'm going to write it up here. So uxy equals p. What was p? p is going to be this first formula here, ax plus by. So ax plus by. And now over a squared plus b squared. And then plus f of q. q is going to be bx minus ay. So this is my solution to the PDE that we started with. So let's go ahead and check the solution, shall we? So I'm going to open up Mathematica. Because this function is a bit more complicated, I don't want to um, uh, do a bunch of algebra. So I'm going to set u. So let's see, u x y equals ax plus by over a squared plus b squared and now plus f bx minus a y all right and now i'm going to i'm going to check whether the um, both sides of this equation are equal so so i have a first derivative of u with respect to x and now plus b times the first derivative of u with respect to y is this equal to 1? Yep, it is, because it's, it says true right here. So that means that the left side here, this is um, 1. 1 equals 1 is a true statement. So we know that this is, in fact, the general solution to this PDE.